I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit generally about Mercury moving into Gemini because um, obviously we're all going to be affected differently like I was telling you with your chart and the placements and how it's going to be hitting you differently. But um, as it is on Monday, we're going to be in an Aquarius moon. We're going to be feeling kind of slow because of Capricorn, because we're in a Capricorn moon kind of moving up to Monday. We're going to feel kind of slow getting closer to it and then it's going to go into Aquarius and we're going to feel weird because it's going to be mixing into this Saturn energy and we're going to feel this really strange restriction on our emotions even though we want to talk and it's a very weird feeling. Um, for some of us it's really going to show up as um, trying to think of how to put this. It's going to show up um, very heavily in relationships because of needing affirmation because this is going to be dealing a lot with self-worth, value, and things like that. Our own individuality and the judgment that comes with it. And the need for being creative. Now, this definitely, since things have a lot of Aquarian energy and we're moving into Gemini energy, this is going to have a pull of networking, internet, media, um, just broader groups in general. It could be friendships and a lot of communication in those areas on an interpersonal level. But when it comes to the spectrum, when it comes to the collective, there's going to be different things going on when it comes to media platforms, when it comes to people who have created certain things, especially when they these creations connect, they have an audience, and it's almost like a magnet. This is like very magnetic energy, and it's going to be very challenging for some people to adapt to the upheaval and that's what mercury and gemini energy is all about is adapting it's the mutable air energy and the reason this is going to be hard is having saturn and the moon conjunct in aquarius which is a fixed energy it can sometimes be very rigid in its way of thinking even though it's a very open-minded energy depending on how you learn and depending on what structures you're a part of, whether that's religion or work or even your own personal belief system, this can make it to where it's very hard to, it's almost like that cognitive dissonance where people have a hard time being able to digest information that directly contradicts their beliefs. And this is what's going to be happening when they're coming up against these new forms of communication, these new forms of people creating different things that speak to them on a level that they don't understand. Because the moon is very deep, it's very subconscious energy, and so is Saturn. Saturn's like Kronos, it's time. It's like this unexplainable thing, but it's also a construct that we've placed on ourselves. And having more subconscious energy mixing with the construct can be very polarizing, especially when people are talking about new concepts, when they're trying to explain points of view, especially when people are learning how to create from what was once a childhood dream. There could be a lot of jealousy that comes up for people that are watching others soar, that are watching people actually make money at going after something they've always wanted to do since they were young when they were told it was impossible. This could also be a lot dealing with since um, Chiron is kind of mixing into family energy a little bit but also siblings. This could be like that sibling rival rivalry energy. like. The one like who is the better, who is the favorite, and 
some people just honestly don't care about that where others they really base their identity on that and this whole thing with Chiron being in Aries is the healing of the identity and of the self so if you're someone that bases your identity off of competition with other people instead of competition with self then what's going to happen is what's going to be coming out in your communication is anger very abrupt very emotionally driven anger because with Chiron there's actually a square to Mars that's in Cancer so anything dealing with competition anything dealing with passions for some people this can be um, dealing with relationships and the communication and the relationships and having to be the dominating force that kind of competition could really flare up and it will become very rapid because it won't be the slow and steady communication of Taurus. It's going to turn into that rapid fire speaking energy of Gemini to where they're known for the glib tongue, where there is like things will fly out, things, the instant comebacks, like the snaps, everything, like what people talk about on Twitter, like being the like combat queen or king or whatever. It's like having the clapbacks and everything. It's like that kind of energy. But what's important is to understand that no one's going to win from that energy. If anything, what it's going to do is it's going to cause a lot of chaos. It's going to cause a lot of emotional turmoil. It's going to make people really start pulling away from you if you're doing this. Um... Because honestly, a lot of people are being pulled more towards what is best for their mental health. Like, it's really becoming a topic. Like, it's becoming more and more as all these things are going on as a collective. And it's something that's becoming more talked about. Um, there's people that have groups around different things dealing with mental health now, as opposed to it being something that used to be dark ages and not talked about. So... People are going to be, some people are going to be obsessive because North Node energy is very obsessive. So having mental energy mixing with Mercury going into Gemini and having North, like North Node obsessive energy can cause a lot of obsessive thinking. It could also um, create what I call word vomit where you literally obsessively talk and you're just like saying whatever comes to mind you're not thinking you're just completely like a loose cannon and like I said um, having this fiery energy going between Chiron and Mars right now where it's like emotionally charged and has this feeling of really hidden wounds deep down in it like if you're not really doing the introspecting and realizing what you're doing you're gonna be causing a lot of harm in your relationships um, this also can be very great for, like I was saying, for the creatives because having rapid fire energy when possibly you've been feeling stuck, like you've been trying to ground ideas and it's like you might have been hitting roadblocks with a couple, some might have been like gaining a little foundation but it's not really a lot of really fast movement, it's like you're just kind of building very slowly. When things start moving into Gemini, what's going to happen is that's going to go a lot faster. It's going to pick up like a breeze. So anything you've cemented during Taurus is going to start taking off very rapidly. You're going to get a lot of very fast, rapid ideas. It's almost going to be like you're trying to keep up with everything that's coming to mind. If you've created a solid foundation, no matter what this is playing out as in your chart, because it can be a foundation of how to take care of your health. It can be a foundation of work-life balance. It could be a foundation of like your friendships, working through things, working through family dynamics. However it plays out for you personally, like in your chart where all this is sitting. It could be your relationship to yourself. I mean, Rajan, with all your 12th house thing, this was a big subconscious relating to the self thing that you're going through. But the thing is, 
using this rapid fire energy to get the ideas you need where you've been having blocks and how to work through blocks is the healthiest way to use this energy. If you're using it to communicate pain in a destructive way, you're going to very rapidly destroy some relationships. Now, some relationships, I'm not gonna lie, in order for you to heal are going to have to end and that's where you're going to have to get the strength to pull together and do that and it's going to hurt a lot. Um, and this is because there's very deep seated wounds that haven't been expressed, they haven't been talked about and now they're really coming out and being put in the spotlight and it's going to hurt a lot just for those that are going through this it's really important to remember especially since Pluto has gone retrograde it's important to remember that we're being brought back to a place to reassess this isn't for punishment this is reassessment so everything that's been kind of pulling up to this point before Pluto retrograde, um, we're going to be looking back now and going, what is still here with me that's not helping me anymore, that I've been carrying around with me for a while, and I know for a fact that all it's doing is sucking me dry of my energy, it's bleeding me emotionally it's like whatever is just tearing you up is going to become something that is so visible to you that you can't ignore it it'll be in your dreams it'll be in your waking life it will be in people mirroring to you what you're doing if it's habits that you're trying to break wherever this is sitting for you it's going to make it to where you cannot hide from it the, the depths are coming up and you need to realize it. The more accepting you are of what's being shown to you and working through it and accepting it, no matter how dark it may seem, the faster your growth will be. Because at the time of Mercury moving into Gemini, there's actually a trine happening between Pluto and Mercury. This means it's opening channels because like I said with Mercury, it's not just communication, it's not just creating, but this is it's also the link to the other side as well. It's not just the 12th house and Neptune or the moon. Like Hermes, he goes heaven, earth, Hades, hell, whatever you want to call it. Like he, he flies all over the place. That's who Mercury is. He can do whatever the hell he wants. So and Pluto is literally the representation of Haiti, so it's like this back and forth of being able to have this open line of communication between the depths of your hell and being able to bring it to the light and communicate it. And that's very important. For some people, that's going to be how their creations just fly out of them, is because they're finally healing these things, or they're finally letting go of these things, because Pluto is scorpionic and energy it's like the death card in tarot so it's gonna be like what are you releasing what painful things are you finally allowing yourself to heal from and what are you holding on to that isn't allowing you to grow it's like you're gonna be faced with all these things the more readily you allow yourself to work through the motions with these things the easier it will be for you because once Mercury moves further into Gemini, it's going to get harder to communicate these things. It's going to become more of a, how can I put this? You're not going to have this easy channel. For some things, it might actually start turning into yods in some people's charts where the communication is a very highlighted focus. And that's going to be very hard for some people because if they haven't been working on everything they need in order to express themselves, it's going to feel like, thing, like your soul's being clawed at to be like ripped out and shown to people and you don't know how to express it. Um, that can definitely lead to people like having emotional outbursts 
but this is also um, the collective energy of people being pulled more towards trying to understand their own spirituality because having Jupiter trining right now um, with Mars sorry I need a drink of water having Jupiter trining Mars with Jupiter being in Aquarius this is like this Jupiter's the spiritual expansive energy and Aquarius being these communities and friendships the internet there's been a lot coming up spiritual communities are becoming something that's a lot more well known having Mars cancer energy trining this is making it to where people are being almost magnetically pulled towards these depths because cancer is moon energy it's almost like being pulled to the subconscious and wanting to understand it some people are really going to be up in arms over what they believe in and it's not going to be coming from logic it's going to be coming from this place of rattled emotions it's going to come from places where there's emotional wounds that haven't been healed and that's why the talk of religion is going to be so sensitive. Um, this could easily lead to divorce for some people. Just having this kind of dynamic. Um, because this is going back and forth between what we value in ourselves, what we value in security, but we're not really understanding how our own surroundings and our own environment and the communities we've created in our environment are causing this tension within us because instead we're pointing the finger. It's someone else. And the whole thing with Chiron being in Aries is you need to learn to look at yourself and realize what you need to heal with yourself. If you're choosing to do that, then what's going to happen is, yes, you're getting the karma, you're getting these things brought back to you pretty much instantly because the more you heal the self, the more you understand, the more doors open. If you're fighting it, the more emotionally, one, unavailable you're going to become because you pull yourself in and the only things that come out are explosions and it's pretty much going to be like a volcano of water but the water every time it comes out is a tsunami so it just sits there like boiling scalding water waiting to rise up and hit whoever it comes near now this isn't going to be just on a personal level this could be like major groups of people lashing out and doing this to other people being very insensitive, especially if people have gone through grieving, if they've gone through loss. It's a very insensitive energy. And it can be um, something that really incites others to act out in defense of groups of people. Um, this energy is the preliminary energy to the blood eclipse that I randomly channeled like four months ago but it's like <laughs> this is the the build up like I said we've been building up for a bit and I didn't even know all the transits when I did that freaking message and now after everything we've been going through and how jam-packed everything's been I can see why this buildup is like just coming to a crescendo because there is so much energy and it's been back to back there has been no breaks in between them and it's almost like people are at a peak of emotional mental physical and spiritual exhaustion and the thing is the people that have been working very very hard they're exhausted and when they see people who haven't been and how selfish they are and what they're doing it's almost like the people that have that used to have trouble with speaking up are finally gonna find their voice and that's gonna be the big change happening is the people that used to be the ones that stepped on others 
are going to realize what it means to be told that they can't do it anymore by the ones. It's almost like the meek rising, pretty much. And this is going to create a huge shift because on a subconscious level, all of those people that have felt very small are going to come together as a group and realize the power in their voice as a collective and just how much weight that carries. This isn't something that's really been seen before because everyone has been so disassociated. There hasn't been ways for people to know that there are others like them. And instead of feeling like they are scattered, it's almost like everything that's happened that has pushed everyone to the internet for connection with all this Aquarius energy and everything that has been happening with worldly events. It's made it to where communities have come together, where very large communities have come together that have the same ideals, that have the same morals. It's like people that want to build together. And while all these things are being created, at the same time there's this boiling point being reached. And it's just getting heavier and heavier as time's going on and as everything starts shifting what's going to happen is it's going to become so tense but we're going to have such open flowing energy to where people it's almost going to seem like people changing their minds on whims and people that are very rigid that don't adapt easily are going to really have a tough time with this. Um, especially people that stay in this energy and stay rigid because of ego. They're probably going to be more of the ones that are exploding at people, inciting violence, um, trying to create havoc. There's going to be a lot of things being regressed simply because people are going back to old habits. And that's something that really needs to be watched out for here because having Pluto sextiling Neptune and it going retrograde is pulling us back into this energy of what is old things we've done, old subconscious routines. Are we learning from them? Have we learned that this is not healthy for us and therefore like, you know, we can heal through it, have compassion for ourselves and why we needed it at that time and that we're at a better place? Or are we going to allow these vices to take over again? Are we going to let this come back in and be the thing that does this, that does us in? pretty much, because having 22 degree over here is both Uranus and North Node energy coming in together sitting on Neptune energy. So the 22 degree with Neptune energy is like, you're going to choose, you have to make a choice, your vices and how they can destroy your life or what you've learned and how you're growing and what that means on your journey because we're always evolving. There's no stopping to it. Um, there's no reaching the complete enlightened state being a human. Like we're gonna constantly be learning no matter where you are, every human is a mess in some area of their life. There is no perfection and that is something that needs to be learned here. There are some people that are finally learning that their healing is extremely messy. They are extremely almost very fetal in their understanding of what it means to heal these wounds. And as a collective, all of us are, because it's been such a long time since people really started looking at these things and seeing just how long things have been sitting on us as a whole for generations, for um, centuries of just constant heaviness and neglect of the self. It's always been the collective, and now it needs to be the self in order to heal the collective. It needs to start from one, like you. You can't go around thinking you're gonna change people no matter how much you throw your temper around, no matter how much you give in 
it's like it can go both ways you can be extremely um, codependent and just allow people to have their tantrums and give in to it or you can be the person that has the tantrum this is something that we can't hide from anymore there's too much showing every aspect of humanity on the internet there it's out for the entire world to see there is no place left unturned at this moment the only place that's kind of left unturned is the bottom of the freaking ocean which it wouldn't surprise me if someone finally makes it to the bottom of the ocean sometime within like the next few years because there's really nothing else going on but it's like everyone's trying to go to external things to distract when we all can see on all these platforms every single aspect of the human experience and you can't say I don't know about this because it's everywhere and the people that go around saying that they don't know they don't know they don't know it's going to become apparent that it's not I don't know it's I don't care and there's a very big difference between ignorance and willful ignorance and that's where the divide is gonna happen because people that are quote-unquote woke there's a big disengagement between it being for trends and it being for the self if something is happening for a trend people are gonna be knocked on their ass once they realize what the trend actually entails if they haven't been doing that actual work of what the trend is saying like if people I'll just take for example people jumping on the Moldavite train when it's been around for a long time but all of a sudden it blows up and everyone wants it and then they're wondering why certain things are happening now everything's intention and you have to realize the intention you set on something is what you're going to get from it but at the same time this is meant to be something with rapid transformation and a lot of people don't understand what that means they're like oh my whole life fell apart we as humans are raised to live lives that usually stifle us to the point where we don't even know what we want and we're constantly hurting ourselves every single day to live up to a standard that doesn't even make us happy so when you're put in a situation where things are taken away to show you what would actually make you happy, it will literally be your life falling apart. That's how it works. <laughs> so if you aren't ready for that and everyone's like, my whole life was ruined, it's like, no, you just weren't doing anything in the realm of helping yourself. You weren't doing anything productive to help yourself. You had nothing but relationships that enabled you to stay in this lower state where you just kept doing things like hurting people and being toxic and having bad habits. You had no one reflecting to you the things you were doing wrong and how you were placing the blame on others. You had no one pointing out that you had healing you need to do and that you were staying somewhere that made you unhappy and that you were dependent on situations purely because that's what you learned as a child. There are so many things that need to be reassessed and it takes a lot of work. It is not something where it's like all of a sudden you get a stone and your life is beautiful. That is not how things work. It's not how it ever worked. And people need to understand this. This isn't just with that. That is with any trend. It is with needing to heal yourself. It is shadow work. It is ego death. All these things that people talk about in spirituality that have words on them. They need to understand what the words mean. They need to understand what it means scientifically. They need to understand when they need help, when they need therapy, when they need medication. Everything balances. It's like you can't take rose quartz 
and shove it in your eye when you need something to help you with some eye surgery. It's like, it's not gonna, you can shove all the freaking rocks you want on your eyeball that you want, but it's not gonna do the laser eye surgery thing for you or whatever is going on in there you need. You have to be practical. There is a big reason why we have sixth and 12th house. This is a wheel, it's the wheel of life. You can't have, oh, hi, hun. You can't have all of this spiritual jargon and then ignore the practical necessities. You can't ignore your health in every aspect just because you want to be on board with a trend. Because what will happen is you slowly kill yourself and then all of a sudden what you have to deal with is like you're over here like well I want to join the trend that it seems like everyone's life is going great if they do this I'm going to do positive affirmations I'm going to do love and light and it's like you can't have only one side of the coin that isn't how it works every coin has two sides the spectrum has one complete opposite end to the other and there's gray areas so no one knows all the answers and then when things start happening in people's lives and they're looking everywhere but themselves for the answers what happens is it creates this massive havoc where no one <laughs> is listening to anything and that's what this energy is trying to show here this isn't meant for trend hopping which a lot of people are going to be trying to do because, like I said, every aspect of the human experience is on the internet now, on multiple platforms, multiple videos, people telling their life stories, people connecting to others that have been through similar experiences. Why do you think there are so many people that have had such really fucked up childhood? It's more commonplace to hear that people have had horrible childhoods than having something that was stable and loving and something that nurtured their creativity or nurtured their dreams. We are part of a society where this isn't seen as important anywhere. Everyone has something over them where you are put in this place to believe that what you want isn't important. And that's why this is going to be so hard for those that have been doing this none of this they've been doing none of it they've been doing none of the introspection they've been doing none of the work whether it is on the practical or spiritual sense whether it's going to therapy and medication or looking into the ego and the things that you've been putting up to protect yourself since childhood whether it's been looking into the things that you've wanted to do since you were a child and you threw them away because they were quote unquote stupid and not practical there are going to be people that have no clue what any of this is and they're going to completely reject it and they're going to keep hurting people but there's the people and this number of people is getting larger which is why this is becoming more and more prevalent the number of people that are realizing that they have a problem, that they have issues that they've carried, that their family has carried traditions that are very harmful, and that if they don't do something themselves, they're just going to keep passing it to their children, and it'll keep repeating. People are becoming more aware because this is everywhere, and you can't escape it. You can't bury yourself in a hole. If you got a cell phone, if you got a laptop, if you have internet, you know about it. There's no way not to. And even if you don't have those things, even if you're like, I hate technology, and you're like, I'm going to travel the world without technology, then you're going to see it with your own eyes. There's no way not to know about the human experience anymore. And there's no excuse as to why people are saying they don't know that they were doing these things. There's no excuses anymore. And that's why this is such a heavy energy. 
That's why this eclipse that's drawing closer and closer. I mean, it's less than 30 days away. That's why this energy is going to be so heavy. Is because all of these people that are still dragging their feet with this energy in Taurus, as more of it keeps moving into Gemini, there's going to be more talking. There's going to be more expression. There's going to be more people pulled towards this obsessive need to talk about this, to create around them this kind of environment. Whether it is the one of trying to encase yourself in a boulder and act like nothing's going on and your head's in the sand, even though you know what's happening. Or it's the people that are progressing very rapidly because they've been working so fucking hard with this energy. They've been trying to understand themselves. They've been trying to understand where their pain actually stems from, no matter what their beliefs are. In this case, it does not matter where you identify in religion. It doesn't matter where you identify in any of these areas. What matters is your core. What matters is what you know hurts you, and out of that, what you've done to hurt others because you didn't know you had something to heal. This comes down to the person, not to the collective. You can't blame a group, you can't blame others for you needing to do work for yourself. And if you're doing that, then what's going to happen is you're going to become a sheep. You're going to follow and blame everything and go with the flock and you're not going to be able to find what truly makes you happy while you're watching a lot of other people succeed and you're not understanding why and you're bitter and you're angry and then you're just going more and more down the hole. It's going to be really well known. I mean, freaking look at all the platforms that are blowing up with millions and millions of people very easily. That's because everyone has access. Okay, thanks for creating very loud noise. But that is because everyone has access to these things. And that's why it's... <sighs> the stars align for a reason. And right now we are all being pushed. Whether we like it or not, into understanding what healing looks like. True healing, not this like, let's go to family counseling thing. This is like you. What's going on with you? And if you don't know where you are, sit with yourself for a minute and think about things and people talking to you and how reactive you are. How reactive are you to certain topics? Or how reactive are you in general? How often do you get angry throughout the day, throughout the week? How often are you crying and doing things where your emotions are very, very loud and they're overwhelming? Be aware of yourself. Because if you aren't, then you can at least start somewhere. It's not saying that if you haven't started this already that you're screwed. I'm in no way saying that you're screwed if you haven't started any of this. This is more like, hey, if you're not already on the boat and you're like kind of starting this, when the wake up call comes, that's going to be really fucking loud. When that wake up call comes and everyone's getting smacked with flames, at least you already kind of have a life raft. You're, you're understanding what you need to do while everyone else is running around like that freaking dog in the meme saying this is fine when it's really not fine. Like, do, do you honestly want to be in the house saying this is fine while everything's on fire? So, it's like taking small steps now and just becoming aware of where you are mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually is very important. Um, especially while we still have some 
energy in Taurus for these next couple weeks. There's going to be some and then it's all going to go Gemini and it's going to be rapid. Create some foundations that are healthy so that way when everything goes into hyper mode because it's going to be like this energy is on crack because it's not only going to be in Gemini, there's going to be planets going retrograde in Gemini, going through multiple signs, flying back and forth in Gemini. There's going to be that blood moon eclipse. That's the Sagittarius full moon. And all of these energies are going to be flying all over place. Then we're going to be having the new moon eclipse in Gemini. Like there's going to be so many things happening back to back for the next couple months. That if you don't have something that you can anchor yourself to before we start and it starts hitting you over and over again, it's going to be such an overwhelming overload that you're not going to really know what the hell is going on. And like I said, this isn't just individual, this is collectively, this is going to be happening with groups and we're going to be seeing groups falling apart. We're going to be seeing certain establishments falling apart very rapidly and it's going to be easy because this Saturn energy is going to be trining all of the Gemini energy. It's going to make it easy for these things to happen. It's going to make it easy for everyone to get their karma, whatever the hell that is. It can be really awesome karma if you've been really working hard and trying to do the right thing. But if you've been fucking people over, being a dickhead, oh, you can bet you're going to get some rapid ass karma for that. And it's going to be both personally, you know, depending on your chart, and it's also collectively. There's going to be groups of people getting collective karma for things they've been doing willfully and being unapologetic for it. And this is happening starting in a couple weeks. Mercury goes in the Gemini Monday. <laughs> it's like it's starting. We had the Scorpio full moon. We all noticed how we felt on that. That was some weird ass shit going on. And that was a super moon. It was kind of showing us, hey, emotions are going to go psycho. Well, what do you think's going to happen at a blood moon eclipse? I mean, and plus in Sagittarius, the sign of expansion, like with Jupiter, Jupiter is going to be in Pisces at this time. Jupiter is going to be scooting over in the Pisces hoping that we're kind of trying to have some compassion for the collective, some subconscious compassion, which a lot of people that have been working on stuff are, but those that don't have it, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a complete mess. There's going to be people, there's going to be groups, there's going to be high profile figures that are going back to some very bad habits, that are going back to some very bad vices, and it's going to get very ugly. So. You have to know where you need to do the work and you have to do it. Otherwise, you're going to get pulled up in this freaking whirlwind of fire, which is literally what it is. It's Sagittarius and Gemini energy just mixing and going to town over here. So decide what you want to do with it. For those of you that have been following me for a while, you already know we've been heading up to this for a good bit and you guys have been really working on your stuff. So for you guys, you already have a life raft built. Even if you feel like things are messy, you already know and you're aware, which is more than some other people can say for themselves. So don't be down on yourselves if you're feeling kind of all over that is the energy but just keep being aware of yourself be aware of your actions and that's what's actually going to help propel you forward 